and welcome to Trader Talk TV. I'm Lindsay Rowntree, CEO of Exchange Wire, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Soren Dienerson, CEO of Digiseg. Hello, Soren. Hello, Lindsay. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Thank Early you flight. For, yeah. But lovely yeah. to have you here yeah. in person, yes. the most important thing. <laughs> today we're talking about measurement, specifically in the cookie free world. And you'll be looking into um, measurement as it pertains to panel-based data and what, what cookie-free worlds now mean for panel-based data, because actually, you know, they're, they're cookie-free in many, many regards. Does that mean that they are the future or does that mean that they are something with which we need to build upon? Let's find out. Yeah, it's, it, it is a super interesting question. I know that a lot of marketeers and traders out there are, are having questions around this area. What's going to happen to the measurement world? Um, and already now we see signs that it's getting more and more difficult to, to use the old tools. And uh, in DigiSec, we have, we have uh, found ways to use targeting data for measurement. And I think it's, it's worth a few minutes uh, to, to start to compare the, the, the old world with the new world. Absolutely. Yeah. Should we kick off? Let's do it, okay. let's do it. So we're going panel-based data versus DigiSeg-based yeah, data. Census data, census data, motor registration data, building registration data, all sorts of civic sources, basically. So, so what, what uh, for, for those that maybe aren't so aware what panel-based data is made up of, kind of what, what typically does a panel-based data look like and where does it come from? Let's, let's, uh, let's try and draw, mm -hmm. um, for instance, UK here. So here we have UK, what are you, 60, 65 million inhabitants? 66 right? million, yeah. Yeah, something like that, right? And in a panel, you usually have uh, up to 1% of the population covered. And that's a, that's a fine panel, right? 1%. That's around uh, six, 700,000 mm -hmm. people in a panel. Just imagine the cost of keeping this running, right, to measure marketing effects uh, primarily. So, so a, a panel has uh, 1%, uh, right, and that's a panel. Then um, if we were to compare it to some of the new techniques, and there are multiple techniques coming up uh, alongside the... Uh, Contextual, uh, sorry, uh, contextual, um, but but we also have these civic sources, and that's that's an interesting new angle because they are not one to one. Panel data is one to one, um, and and panel data basically is is based on, on questions and answers, right? Um, where where we ask people simple questions. DigiSec, uh, we we cover seventy percent, seventy percent of all digital impressions in UK, and, and by the way, in, in, in many, many other markets, like uh, 46 markets in total. Wow. Um, and uh, the secret source to this is that we use civic sources. And civic sources, that, that, that basically means that we tap into all the data that are used to govern uh, this society. So in UK, that's the motor register, that's the, that's the building register, that's the tax register, that's uh, census data mm -hmm. and so forth, right? So a lot of, uh, of, of registers, let me just call it Rex here, yeah. See, of course, this data, we can't buy that one-to-one. -one. It comes in, uh, in, in, in clusters of, uh, of various sizes, and, and what we use is, uh, is neighborhoods of 100 households minimum. That means that, that they, are, they, are, they are big enough not to, to, to uh, contain any personal data, uh, but they are still small enough to actually give us explanatory variance and, ex and you know, explain who buys what. Because if you went in the helicopter and, and, and looked at, at society today, you would see that we live in a fairly segmented way. And because this data covers so much more than a panel, it, it's worth investigating. So what is the targeting power in this? What is the, the measurement power in this data? And, uh, and we, have, we have found some uh, pretty surprising uh, elements to this. We've but, found. I, but, but I think basically in order to, to, to compare the two, uh, we, should, we should look into what is important for, for, for measurement. And uh, I don't know about you, but the first thing that I would do if, if I were to evaluate a, a measurement tool, that would be to look into, do I trust it? And Absolutely. Fundamentally important. Yeah. Do, can I, should I trust the data that's being presented to me? So trust. So um, the big question is, do, do we trust a, a panel first? And it is sort of the, the standard or maybe even gold standard of measurement today. And, uh, and they are fairly expensive, right? Uh, because you, you, you need to ask a lot of questions to a lot of people. But I, I think that we can say that, yes, we, 
we, we do trust panels today. That's, that's, uh, that has been widely used for the past uh, 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, then the big question is, uh, do we then trust DigiSec data? Well, the data uh, comes from civic sources, and it's uh, geo-positioned IPs that are free of personal data. And it's not one-to-one, -one, but uh, it is a probabilistic measurement pieces on the IP, whether you come from a neighborhood with high income, low income, cars, kids, uh, high education, low education, and so forth. And um, if, if it's good enough for, uh, for, for governing a country and uh, to set the right <laughs> tax rates and, uh, and make a proper educational law and so on, it should also be good enough for marketing. That's at least uh, my take on it. What are some of the reasons that we shouldn't or maybe should question panel-based data? versus what did you say data can, can offer, given its, given its source? Yeah, well, there, there, there are many pros and cons for panel data as well, right? You, uh, you, you have to uh, make people answer these questions, and, and that means that you probably also have to give them some incentives, like a little Amazon voucher or whatever it could be. And, and that means that it's not completely uh, uh, you know, stratified in, in the sense that, um, that you see a certain part of the population is more eager to, to answer questionnaires. So I, I think trust-wise, we can, we can sort of say these two, they, they, they even out. So what, it, what DGSEC makes up in lack of one-to-one -one data is, is made up uh, or, or uh, is, is given back in terms of much more data recognized. Then, the, then we have uh, another basic element in, in choosing a measurement, uh, that is price. And, of course. Uh, and, and price, Price uh, in a panel is uh, notoriously expensive, right? We are talking um, more than 10,000, uh, uh, five, 10,000 uh, pound, euros, dollars. Uh, so it's, it's a massive investment if you are a big brand like Coca-Cola and you would like to measure, so what, what went on in my campaign? It's uh, nothing for the likes of Coca-Cola, but for smaller yeah, brands that want to yeah, understand what's worked, yeah. it's probably a little bit... Yeah limiting yeah. and also i guess it's so expensive because of you mentioned incentivization that's required for panel based you have to keep the whole thing rolling yeah. right in the, in in when you use these register data here and census data you um, you you buy it and you buy it once and you buy it probably once a year and, and then it's just there mm. and you can use it for targeting and for measurement alike so so the cost is super small compared to uh, it's probably one third. It could also be one fourth wow. of the cost. So there are incentives to go this way. That's significant. Then we have an, another um, important factor: that scale. Does it scale? See, when the cookie is is disappearing from our ecosystems here, we have to rely on hashed emails and other identifiers, maybe clean room. Uh, so when we look at scale here it can be really hard in the future to recognize that 1% of panelists in your campaign. And let's say that you have a really good clean room. What I hear is that the maximum scale that they have is around 30%. Right. Then you don't recognize 1% anymore, but you recognize 0.3. So, so, so scale is, uh, is, is, is limited. Um, on the other hand, over here, with the census data and the register data, uh, it's, scale is not an issue, right? You can, you can use the data for, for measuring a lot of, of uh, digital touch point, not just mm. a campaign, but also a homepage or a CTV campaign, which is very small in terms of impression, but because you recognize 70% of them, suddenly you have scale. And uh, so I, I would go as far as to say, oh, yes. <laughs> Do you have scale? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's, there's oh, yes. definitely scale. But again, this is not one-to-one, -one, right? It's uh, probabilistic data. Um, another important thing is to find out whether it's actionable. Most of the measurement uh, reports today, uh, they, um, they, they are, whether it's a rebel report or it's a proper you know, investigation of what, who saw my campaign, mm. it has the tendency just to be read, oh, interesting, and then put in the drawer. You can't really do anything with it because the budget is gone. It's, it's, it's over. It's spent. And uh, so, 
actionable. So, so here I, I would I would go as far as to say uh, not not really right. It's not really actionable. But over here, we will see that it's very actionable. So what you what you measure, you can target one to one because this data is not reserved just for you know the panelists or for for for, for the purpose of measurement. It's something that we have on all digital events, or 70% of all digital events, which means that if you measure something in a CTV campaign, you can use it for targeting in another CTV campaign. So, so um, yes, it is, uh, it, it is actionable. Right? Then um, there is a, 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 you know, another issue with what devices can you connect to it. And up here in a panel, you are probably relying on, on identifiers like cookies and hashed emails. But those are really hard, again, in in-app, in audio, in, uh, in, in CTV. So, so, so what, uh, what devices are covered? And here, you could say that some, uh, but, but, but not uh, CTV. Over here, we have all. Mm. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sorry. Uh, mistake there. <laughs> it's not, the it's not beautiful. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be a statistics teacher and uh, my, my students did not like my handwriting. You have been warned now. <laughs> so, so all, but uh, it, it, it includes CTV, right? It includes all, uh, every impression coming from um, iOS, from, from Safari users, from in-app, from audio. And, uh, and that, that opens up a lot of new opportunities when you want to do measurement. So there, there is, a, I think, a final aspect that, that we should also compare, mm -hmm. which is timing. So, and, and, and if we, um, I'm just going to go down here. Timing. And if we were to look at a campaign build up, then you have here uh, day, uh, day, day zero, and here you have uh, day 21. And up here you have impressions. Then, in, in a campaign build-up like this, you would probably recognize, you know, half a percent of all impressions in a, in a panel. So it goes like this, or maybe one percent. Let's, let's, let's say that it's, it's one percent, right? That means that at the end of the campaign, you have one percent mapped in the panel. Boom. In DC, it looks like this. After 21 days, there you have 70% mapped. And those 70%, they, they give you enough statistical power to, to give you a, a, a report already on day two. I was going to say, you don't have to wait 21 days, you do it, much, do it much sooner, and you've still got enough data. And basically our findings is that we get exactly the same panel report, so the same findings. Uh, as as in the in, in the in the old school measurement report, but we just get it day two, mm. and that means that it opens up for actions that you can do with the budget. You could adjust your campaign. You could buy differently. You could do different targeting to meet the, the demands of the advertiser. And um, the the difference here basically is a strategic advantage. And now it becomes really bad the handwriting. <laughs> I mean, you're the first person to get on the floor, I think. For okay, okay, talk. yeah, so yeah. yeah. I, want, I, want use, I want to use the whole <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Making use of the yeah. whiteboard, I love it. Um, but I guess there's one question around this, which is obviously you mentioned that obviously panel-based data is one-to-one -one data. Um, did you say data is probabilistic data, obviously, yeah. and you know, in a cookie-free world, it, it needs to be outside of first-party data, it has to be probabilistic. What about questions around precision? Yeah, yeah, that is, uh, that, that is a, a big question, right? How precise is this data? And um, uh, the, the, I think one of the best ways that we can look at it is if we look at it in terms of reach as well. Mm -hmm. So if we take uh, precision here, and here we have uh, panel data, which is one to one, right? And out here we have reach. And panel data has one to one, and it covers 1% of the population. So that's a panel. DGC is up here, duk, 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 with 70% uh, reach, 70% um, DGC, 
uh, but we have one to 100. Right. And how do we then compare these two systems? But what we find out is that what we are lacking in terms of reach, we make up for, uh, well, in, in DigiSec, you, you get that much more reach. And even though it is not as precise as one-to-one -one data, it is made up for by, by simply uh, having much more data points to measure on. Again, down here, if you can move from, from 21 days to two days, that difference here is basically added targeting power. So, so at the end of the day, this, this is an example of targeting power. And the big thing that we'll keep coming back to on this, of course, is the, the, the what, you're, what you're lacking in precision, you're making up for in reach, it all comes down to actually the source of the data. Yeah. That's a really fundamental yeah. part of that yeah. needs to be hammered home a lot, yeah. isn't it? That actually because of where it's come from, yeah. that means that all of this stuff is possible. Yeah. It, it, it is not the same, right? You, yeah. cannot, you cannot put an equality sign between of the course two not. there. It is not the same. But if you did two uh, comparable reports on the same campaign, so let's say that you did one for uh, you did one for income income children cars uh, education life cycle so far you know duk, 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 there are many there are many uh, variables that we have in common mm -hmm. uh, you would see that that uh, the profile of it would look like this. You know, there'll, there'll, there'll be some ups and downs. Something would be overrepresented and something would be underrepresented. Um, and this would be the panel. You would also get some really nice pie charts, right? Get two of them and we also get a, a, a bar chart there. If we did the DigiSec, the DigiSec uh, measurement report on the same thing, they look exactly the same. We capture the same. We even capture the same indexes. So if you see an income group all represented by an index of uh, 140, we usually see the same. And that's that's how um, uh, uh, targeteers and, uh, and and traders today they, they they swap from the old world to 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 new systems. That is to compare. So what do I get if I mm. use this? What do I get if I if I use this? And at the end of the day, basically it means that you can, you can measure what you target, but you can also target what you measure with this uh, yeah. way of thinking. And using market covering data, right? It covers the whole, the whole enchilada is covered with, uh, <laughs> with, with this data because we all chip into it yeah. every day. Uh, the tax authorities know surprisingly uh, much about us. So does the motor register, so does the building register. And, and those building out there, they, they, are, they are very, very stable and static. Um, they don't change overnight. Mm. Uh, panels, Q&A, does change, change a lot more. So, so there are pros and cons with every measurement system, but at the end of the day, they cover the same. Yeah. And I guess that really, really reinforces the, uh, the scale um, aspect of the argument of, of why this data is so, so important. And for those that are concerned, you know, we talk about, this is, this is very personal data we're talking about, you know, census data, data about your tax your income. Well, no, it's, it's actually not personal. Well, that's there you the go. Of it, that's, right? the, that's the thing. People might be yeah. worried that yeah, it's, yeah, it's PII, yeah, yeah. but yeah. of course it's not no, PII it's at not, all. Yeah. So, so we, we build all this data without consent. No, 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 no. Right? <laughs> we, we take the exact IP address and we geolocate it. And we don't take the, ad the, the IP address from, from some uh, source of, uh, you know, uh, we, we don't take it from the bitstream or from uh, another source. Uh, we, we, we simply also generate all IPs for UK. So we have them all. And then we geoposition them. And the way that we do it is not a secret. We, we simply buy, oh, I can let go of these ones. We simply buy all, all uh, geopositioning tools out there and we overlap them. And where they agree that this IP belongs to this neighborhood, we take it for good. And by, by doing so, we end up with a lot of neighborhood data with a minimum of 100 households in, in each neighborhood, which is impossible to identify a single person or single household in this neighborhood. But we end up with mapping 70% of all IPs to this. And by the way, if you want to do this at home, you have to remember to cut away businesses because it doesn't make sense of course. to geoposition a business and say that they have two or more kids. 
hopefully they do not have two or more kids, right? It's the employees. And um, they, yeah, the same with uh, cellular traffic and IPs that are cellular mm. born, that, that are you know, used to carry 3G, 4G and 5G now. Um, it doesn't make sense to put this type of data on that. And when you caught these uh, problem children away, when you, when you <laughs> caught these, uh, these uh, um, uh, you know, IPs away, you end up with surprisingly good quality in the private sphere. And that's why we don't end up with 100%, but, but only 70%. And, uh, yeah. I was going to ask, why not 100? That's why not 100? That's why not 100. Mm. Simply because it, it wouldn't make sense to, to use. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's been fascinating. Thank you so much for coming in today, Soren. Thank you. Traveling all the way from, from Denmark to, yeah. to have this chat with us. Um, yeah, really interesting. The opportunities that are available in the cookie-free world when it comes to measurement. Hopefully this has opened up people's eyes today. Thank you for coming in. I hope so too. Thank you very much. Enjoy yeah. your talk TV. Yeah. I'll see you next time.